It is easy to think badly about Zacchaeus as we read this story because we find out that he is a tax collector and uh, tax collectors in the Bible uh, never seem to be in a good spot. Uh, We're told simply that he is rich and the crowd tells us that he is a sinner. Uh, But we maybe should take some of that with a grain of salt because anytime Jesus is hanging out with uh, somebody that people don't like, they condemn him for hanging out with sinners. And also, there's a little bit of a trick uh, in the Greek of this story. Uh, When Zacchaeus at the end looks at Jesus and says, I uh, give away half of my possessions and I will, uh, anybody that I've defrauded, I'll give them four times as much. It actually does not say will in Greek, right? Will is a future tense thing. It's in the present tense. So it could well be that Zacchaeus is saying, look, Jesus, I give away already half of what I have. And if I cheat anybody, I give them back four times as much, which would be way more than you would expect. So today I want to give Zacchaeus the benefit of the doubt that he wasn't a terrible human being, but that he was a tax collector and he was rich and he was being very generous all at the same time, which we would probably celebrate someone today who was both rich and generous and was giving it a good effort. And that uh, amidst all of that, somehow something was missing. Like there's different kinds of test questions, right? There's multiple choice, true, false, essay. uh, And uh, maybe in the, the test of life, sometimes it's fill in the blank. And uh, he has not figured out how to fill in that blank. But he hears that Jesus is coming, so he's going to go see Jesus. Now, I never thought uh, him climbing the tree, right? He's got to see him. He's short. Okay. Uh, Never thought too much about that until this week I was talking to my buddy, Pastor Rob. And in the midst of that conversation, he said, when was the last time you climbed a tree? And I laughed because my body does not bend that way anymore. And when I think about Zacchaeus being the chief tax collector, he was probably of an age where his body didn't necessarily bend that way anymore either. So him running up ahead to climb a tree was probably not an easy thing. And it tells you that there was something that he had heard, something about needing to see Jesus that sent him up that tree, probably because he had not filled in the blank in his life yet. That is something uh, that I think this story invites us to wrestle with, right? Do we all have the blanks filled in? Uh, When life is not going well, it's easy to know that we don't have the blanks filled in. Uh, In Zacchaeus' case, it seems like everything's going fine, and yet something is still missing. And I'm betting that most of us here uh, today, at some point in life, or maybe lots of points in life, has felt like something is missing, And whether that's true of us every day, it is certainly true in our culture because we are always trying to fill in the blanks. There would not be as many self-help books as there are. There would not be the iterations of life coaches and all the sorts of people that uh, are out there to help us figure life out. There would not be all the inspirational quotes and inspirational podcasts and inspirational TV shows that try to help us fill in those blanks if we weren't trying to fill them in. And you can bet that Zacchaeus tried to fill them in, and when he couldn't get it filled in, he finally went and said, well, who's this Jesus guy? Maybe he could fill in the blanks. And as uh, we sit in a church and our culture struggles with the, the shrinking of the church in the West, it's easy for us to maybe wonder what it is that we're doing, and does the world even uh, believe in Jesus anymore? Are people trying to fill in the blanks? And I heard a statistic recently that told me that uh, despite all of the spiritual but not religious and the nuns who don't have a religious identification, there aren't very many that are actually atheists. That most of them have some kind of spirituality and faith, Meaning that they live in the same space we do of trying to fill in the blanks and are looking for answers to fill in those blanks and probably running into uh, solutions that don't actually fill that blank in. Which brings me to the next part of this story, which is Zacchaeus, who's trying to fill the blanks in, goes looking for Jesus, but the people that are gathered around Jesus get in the way. And uh, who gathers around Jesus here today? We do. So I think it maybe could cause us to ask, are we in the way? If people are going to look for Jesus. I spent some time on Tuesday in a world religions class at a community college uh, as an invited guest to talk about Christianity. And early in that uh, class, I asked the group of these young people for their perceptions of the church. And I will tell you, they were not good. Judgmental, 
close-minded, hateful, like it was not a, a good list. And so if I take their input and say, are we that gather around Jesus in the way? I have to maybe say, yeah. But then I think about looking for Jesus and seeing Jesus myself, right? As I tried to fill in the blanks. And I think about every time I come into this place, how often I do see Jesus. And it is in so many different ways. Uh, if you haven't gotten to serve communion at this table yet, every time we gather at this table, I see Jesus. I see Jesus in the little hands of little ones that reach up. I see it in the faces of all of you when you come up and bring your struggles with filling in the blank up to this table, looking for Jesus yourselves. I see Jesus in the way you greet people and welcome people into this community. I see Jesus in the quiet ways that you all don't see, that generosity uh, comes uh, out from you and touches the lives of others. I see Jesus here all the time. But the story of Zacchaeus isn't the story of a bunch of people sitting in the temple waiting for Jesus to show up and then seeing him when he gets there. It's the story of Jesus out in the world encountering Zacchaeus where he is and going to his house. So then I have to ask myself, if we're out in the world, do people see us and encounter Jesus? As they're trying to fill in their blanks and we are, if we are really the body of Christ called to live our faith out in the world, do they encounter in us Jesus? It was interesting in that world religion class, uh, I did not teach them all the Christian doctrine stuff because their professor was gonna do that. Instead, I talked about sort of the world's story of pursuing wealth and using violence to get our way and uh, all the different ways we try to fill in the blank. And then I contrasted that with the story of Jesus and suggested that uh, a faithful life is one that reorders itself around Jesus's story of uh, self-sacrifice, dying on the cross to give us life, all of the rest of that. And their questions were fantastic. And almost every one of their questions was getting at, was I the person talking to them, ordering my life around Jesus? They wanted to know if this was for real, right? One of the questions was, what kind of car do you drive? As we're talking about church and offering and wealth and all those things. Another question, where does all the money go? Another question, is there any room for mystery in your understanding of this faith? These were fantastic questions, but literally every single one of them had to do with, I'm standing in front of them and they want to know if I really live this stuff. They want to know if, they wouldn't say it this way maybe, but if Jesus has filled in the blanks and if it has caused me to reorder my life around this story I just talked to them about. And so as we go out into the world, I hear Pastor Rob in my head again, not the uh, same thing about climbing the tree, but uh, he's been a pastor for 13 years and for every one of those 13 years, he has stood up in front of his congregation and talked about uh, living everyday faith in everyday life, about living in the tension of that. And living in the tension of that is a hard thing to do because we so often are trying to fill in the blanks of life uh, our own ways and uh, we are called at once to be the ones that Jesus comes to save, but also to be the body of Christ in the world. So how are we supposed to fill in the blanks for other people when we can't even fill in the blanks for ourselves? But that's what I love about this story with Zacchaeus. Jesus invites himself over, which is fantastic, right? Hey, I'm coming to your house. And then as he gets there, uh, Zacchaeus tells him, look, I give away all this stuff and I'm, I'm trying my best. And then Jesus says, today salvation has come to this house. Now, certainly Jesus can be talking about eternal life, but I think he's saying, today I showed up, Zacchaeus, to fill in the blanks. Now, salvation, because Jesus is the one that showed up, right? So when he says salvation showed up at this house today, he's saying, I showed up. And he, he showed up to fill in those blanks. Now, uh, on the next day, is uh, Zacchaeus still going to be the chief tax collector? Yes. Probably. Is he still rich? Yes. yes. Has Jesus filled in the blanks? I have to imagine if Jesus shows up at your house and tells you salvation has arrived, that that probably causes you to reorder your life a little bit. Now, maybe he stops being a tax collector. We don't know. Maybe he starts giving away more. Maybe he all of a sudden has a whole different understanding of who he is in the world and how he's supposed to live. The point is that salvation showed up. He did not fill in the blanks for himself. Jesus showed up and did that for him. 
So as we live in that space of tension, right, of how do we live faith in the world, that everyday faith in, in everyday life, uh, we have to always remember that Jesus died and, and was raised for us, that he's the one that fills in the blanks. So when we come to this table every week, does Jesus show up? Yes. yes. And like I said, I see Jesus in this place every day, right? The challenge is for us to go out into the world and live in that tension. And I think we can do that in two ways. One is to do what Zacchaeus did, which is look for Jesus. And if we look for Jesus in the world, do you think we'll find him? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the other is also, though, to steep ourselves in practices of faith. Uh, reading scripture helps us to hear the story of Jesus again and again and again until it lives in us. And then when we go looking for Jesus, we just might find Jesus. Gathering in this place is a way that we practice being community and practice conversation and practice being vulnerable and practice forgiveness so that when we take that out into the world, we can carry that with us. And then when people look at us and say, is your faith for real? They might just see Jesus. Not because we're good at being faithful, but because Jesus fills in those blanks for us. So as we go out this day wrestling with that tension, may we be blessed to live in those practices of faith worship, prayer, scripture, service, relationships with one another, trusting that we don't have to fill in the blanks, Jesus does. And when Jesus does, the rest of the world will see that faith in us and people will find that salvation has showed up in their lives because it has showed up in ours and we know that and trust that grace to be true. Amen.